even introspect, um, you know, take some time to, to look at yourself and say, hey, what can I do, you know, to be better? What do I need to do, you know, to rectify the situation and all that good? Um, so investing and, and making sure that we take that time to really value and appreciate. But you do that by your behavior and your willingness to forgive, your willingness to communicate. Um, to talk, to understand and say, hey, what's the pro- your willingness to listen? Uh, sometimes we you have know, a hard time. We have been talking and, and we did not go live. Oh, man. And we're just now hitting it. Going live. Well, hey, yeah. y'all. <laughs> well, I don't know if it's going to even pick it up. Oh, here it is. We're here now. My God. Okay. We got to okay. apologize, y'all. We, we had a technical difficulty and it was we- me. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome hey. to Life Lessons Live. Welcome. We here. We have been going and y'all have missed some good stuff. We've been talking yes. amongst one another, man. We are on here. We're talking about healthy, successful relationships. What do they look like? Yes. You know, and valuing relationships and everything is based on relationships. We uh, we are are glad about your relationship. You getting on, you listening, you watching, whenever you are, uh, wherever you're listening at or from. We appreciate that, and we want you to comment in the comment sections. Man, we had some good dialogue, Stephanie, and, and I, 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 I messed that up. I thought I clicked the live button, and I did not. Amen. Well, we now, so we uh just just to kind of piggyback off of what we were just saying, um, you know, you asked the question, do we value those relationships in today? And um, I, you know, I sadly I do say that I don't think that we value them as much as we used to, or maybe that we need to. And I just made a comment about some different things that we hear that that are tossed in the atmosphere, you know, like um. I don't need anybody or I could do bad all by myself or three strikes you out. And, you know, um, you hear those things. And when you hear those things, you realize like, wow, we are quick to throw away relationships when we feel like they are not um, benefiting us or the people haven't done what we wanted them to do or how we wanted them to do it. Uh, So. And, and And we framed all of this as in, I believe that true success in life is the 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 quality relationships that you have yes because material things and, and achievements and all of that man all those things are great let's do that we're put on the earth to do those things but when it comes down to it at the end of the day your true wealth is based upon the relationships that you have okay. i want my spouse i want my children i want my friends i want my neighbors to value and appreciate uh, mm-hmm. you know, who I am and the same thing for them. I want to yeah. value who they are. And when you value people, you do things, you want to do what's right. You want to treat uh, others the way they deserve to be treated. Mm-hmm. You know, many times we say um, uh, treat others the way you want to be treated. Well, there's some truth to that, but I can tell you this. I found in life that you're not in an environment sometime that that's going to be beneficial to you. Sometimes you gotta you gotta sow what you want to reap, and and sometimes you gotta treat others better than they're treating you. Oh, um, bitch! And that's that's the way that's the way we begin to transform environments, because a lot of times people don't know how to treat one another, because they, <laughs> they never really learned, never really modeled, never been in in real wholesome environments, and and, and we've got to do better at that. You know, creating those wholesome environments, whether it be in the workplace, whether it be in relationships, um, talking about dating, marriages, uh, fathers and sons, mothers and daughters. You know, there are some some mothers and daughters whose relationships, they're just not healthy. And, and sometimes it's not either of them's fault. It's just that nobody invested the time in them for them to, to teach them what that really looks like. They hadn't seen it modeled before. And sometimes things are just being passed down generationally. Um, mm-hmm. Some people have never discovered what what marriage really looks like. They don't have models of successful marriages, um, mm-hmm. successful workplaces. Uh, you can have great workplace environments, but somebody got to take the lead. Somebody got to go the extra mile and treat people how they need to be treated. 
um, you know. Um, but that's a, come on. I was just gonna say, Bishop, that's a part of creating a healthy culture. Like even as we talk about building relationships and how to, um, you know, properly date and to be healthy, there has to be a culture that has been created. And for me, I mean, I know that a culture is the way that people think. Um, and so a lot of times when people are not in environments that that is um, a part of the norm or something that has been done or modeled, like you said, they just you can't live above your revelation. And so they don't know how to appreciate or how to communicate. Maybe the environment that they came from, that's all they did was holler and scream or maybe use vulgar language towards each other. And so they feel like that's a proper way to communicate. Um, and so when you start being in the mix with people and you start saying, hey, you know, this is our culture. This is what we, um, you know, this is what we want. This is what we expect. You know, this is our vision. This is our mission. You said something about this, like if there's no reason for you to be dating, why are you dating? Like what is the purpose and the vision mm -hmm. of the environment that you are in or the, you know, what you are connected to? So well, there has about go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say there has to be a mission. There has to be some some core values and some statements that are made so that people can connect to those things. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I agree. A lot of things have to be caught rather than taught because have you ever been you're a biracial uh, young, young, young lady. Mm -hmm. And so and you you don't talk like many times other people talk. You sound a little different. You know, mm -hmm. you, you, you know, and so. If we're, if we're not careful, uh, and you hear this happen many times uh, mm -hmm. in the midst of people, you talk white. Oh, because you're pronouncing your words and you're not, you know, you're not using dirt certain things or saying things certain ways, or yeah. you perceive to be soft, you perceive to be weak, you perceive to be, you know, whatever. You think you're such a much, you think you're better than everybody else. Yeah. And so, um, we have to be strong and we have to be very courageous and we have to know that, well, you know, we can talk with intelligence and I'm not mm -hmm. calling you ignorant because you talk this way or that way, but sometimes you hadn't been exposed to certain things. We can treat one another right because I don't uh, go at you or, or uh, curse you out or, or mistreat you because you did something wrong towards me and I forgive you instantly. I'm not mm -hmm. being soft. Uh, I feel that the sum total of us being together is greater than us being separated. Mm -hmm. You know, we can get more done together in learning, learning one another, appreciating one another and uh, showing you that, hey, you mean more to me than what you just did. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Bishop, can I can I say this? Yeah. In our generate in this generation it when it comes to dating sometimes women and sometimes men will say um you know you are women will say this about men that you are a simp or I that you know. are a simp okay meaning that you are weak when you know you actually want to have a conversation or try to get an understanding and not respond with you know, you crazy or what's wrong with you or I'm going to go upside your head. And so I'm just saying what has become what is really dysfunctional has now become function because so is that, that the term that I want to be a thug. Is that is that I want to thug? <laughs> well, just, that in, in some logic of means. I'm just I'm not being funny. I'm not being. No, funny. I got you. I got you that in some logical sense. It's almost like if you don't have any emotion or if you're too laid back or you're too um, what they say, um, you know, just if you're just not, you know, riled up about whatever, then that means that you don't care. You're too nonchalant. And I'm thinking like that's not the proper way to look at that. Like I shouldn't have to feel like somebody cares or loves me um, because they are aggressive with me. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, but what you just said, you know, being able to talk or being able to, um, 
have these conversations and do different things, that doesn't mean that that this is a healthy relationship. I'm just saying that dysfunctionalism has now become like, oh, well, that's a sign of love or care or adornment. So so we we in a nutshell we're just talking about, you know, what does a what does a successful relationship look like? Whether it be friends, whether it be relationship between mother, daughter, uh, father, sons, uh, co-workers, employers, employees. And and I think it all comes down to us being able to communicate because the inability to communicate uh, breaks down any relationship and you got to value one another. You got to value people and where there's no value. Uh, there's no respect. There's no honor. And, and, uh, but I, I think this too, Stephanie, for me, I'm talking about me um, until I learned or came to know the love of God, I really didn't have the capacity to love others and even to know how to be loved, yeah. you know, because you take it as if somebody's just buying you something, oh, they must love me. Not necessarily. That could be forms of manipulation. Um, it has nothing to do with love. That's, that's a controlling wow. mechanism, you know, just all different types of things are going on. Um, and so until I came to know the love of God, I really didn't know how to be loved and I didn't know how to love others. And that's something that we just got to deal with. And that's what the scripture says. God is love. And so when we start talking about developing relationships, one for me, taking me first, I'm going to, uh, as I come to know that I'm going to make sure I'm a good steward over that. Mm -hmm. you know, so that I can be what I need to be to others. You know, Absolutely. And that neighbor, uh, that person who, who uh, you say you want to spend your life with and all those different types of things. Cause we'll learn how to love, you know, love covers a multitude of sin. Love is a force. Love goes the extra mile. Love is kind. Love is patient. You know, love doesn't, doesn't uh, exhort itself. Envy. Huh? Does envy, doesn't boast, doesn't uh, hold, hold grudges. Hold grudges. Mm -mm. Don't do none of that type of stuff. And so we really got to take some evaluation of ourselves. No. What I want to see is what I need to be. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so as we do those things, that's what we got to do. I know you got to get out of here. And then I was just going to say, Bishop, and even when you do that, um, actually taking the next step to being healthy or the next step in operating in healthy relationships is when you discover these things, and I'm just telling you because this is my experience. <laughs> when you discover these things, man, repent and oh. ask for forgiveness and make it right because oftentimes we'll find ourselves in regret saying, you know, I didn't do this or, you know, I didn't do that. And um, man, the Holy Spirit is amazing and he brings things back to our remembrance. You know, I, I, anybody breathing, in this world, I feel like the Holy Spirit, God is always communicating to us, trying to get us to um, to hear him, to know him, to to develop and to grow. And sometimes those are the hindering factors that that hinder our growth is your inability to be able to um, just repent and say, I, I, I messed up. I'm sorry. I, I repent. Please forgive me. And then you can really start building. It's going to work wonders for you. It's going to work wonders for the person that you're doing it to, to establish those healthy relationships and build and move forward. And one of the things for me, Stephanie, I remember this journey as it began getting on the right course. I just yes, simply said, because I didn't know what to ask. I didn't know what to do. I just said, God, I need you to help me. Come on, Bishop, help me. Help me. I need you to help me because I have people that, I need to do right. I need to, I need to be right. I need to do right. I need to treat right. I value them. And I need mm -hmm. you to help me. And I believe mm -hmm. that that's, that's something, uh, and, and, and we can say it all day long, but I, I cried out. I did. I said, Lord, God, help me, you know, yes, help me, Lord. And help came. Cause I believe yeah. anytime the student appears, a teacher show up. Yep. And so when you truly desire and you're earnest, I, I really meant that in my heart. I really meant that in my heart. And uh, I think that no one is expungible. I mean, well, I said expungible. We don't have to throw people away. Yeah. I think that we just got to show them their value. 
Mm -hmm. And you gotta learn to value other people, know the importance of relationships um, so that we can all do better. We can all do better. We gotta be better to do better. Do better. Come on, Bishop. But well, we think that healthy change it starts with me. It starts with me. It starts with me. I gotta be but, better. You know, but love has to be the motivating factor. You know, has to be the motivating factor. That's what'll make you do enough. You know, and when you understand that I'm supposed to love people, you know, people are my greatest asset. That's what's going to be the true essence of my success. You have all the money in the world, all the accolades in the world, but don't have any people around you. You got to pay people to be around you. You got to, you know, whatever it is, man, that is no good whatsoever. That is not mm -hmm. one of the greatest joys when my grandchildren, they want to see me. When Come my, on. People, my life, they want to see you. Listen, I value uh, you wanting to hang around with me and we talk about things and Ooh. we do things and we get things done together. You know, yeah. man, that is valuable to me. It's yeah. more valuable than, um, than, than anything. It really, really is. And so whenever there's a healthy relationship, there's increase. You know, there's prosperity. There's joy. There's peace. And listen to this. It's contagious. Bishop, yes, it is. It is. It's contagious. It's contagious. I want to encourage every married couple, man, when your marriage is authentic, be be authentic around people. It's contagious. It'll make people want to be married. It sure will. I'm, I'm challenged with people that don't want to be married anymore because they see and hear all of these horror stories. Yeah. You know, some people say, I'm done with that, you know, and all this. And I'll submit this to you. You know, it's, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, maybe you didn't know how to be married. Yeah. Maybe maybe you, you were challenged with, you you know, you had a wrong uh, view of yourself. And, uh, you know, and, and so friends are good. It's, it's great to have friends. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Bishop, I was just going to say, I am so grateful for the conversations that we have had just in the past, but even these conversations about relationships because, if you do all of this stuff up front <laughs> and you mm -hmm. talk about it and you kind of get it out in the atmosphere, I mean, you are better prepared, um, more knowledgeable, and you have mentors that you can connect with because sometimes when you get in situations like in your marriage, you got to know that some things are going to happen. Some things are going to be, um, you know, your faith is going to be tried. Um, and things will happen. And so sometimes you see people not knowing how to move forward together or resolve these things. And then, you you know, like you say, you see these breakups and marriages and stuff. And I have been one of those people that say, oh, I don't know about it uh, mm -hmm. I, because, you know, this is going on and I just can't see or I just can't understand. But it's, it, that has no relevance on the the covenant or what God has intended. That's about you not having the proper wisdom or maybe not being in connection with the right relationships that will mentor you, give you wisdom that will help you. And so, you know, it's good to have these conversations up front. It's good to talk about these things and get these things out in the atmosphere so that you'll be more quick or apt to do that when you are facing a challenge or adversity. And I think that that's important too. Um, a lot of times people say, well, nobody never told me. Well, we're talking, you're just not listening. Yeah. And so you gotta get into the environment. You gotta be intentional about growing and listening. Relationships require work. And y'all say this a lot and I never understood what it meant. Marriage is for grown folks. <laughs> <laughs> and so- the, 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 Yeah, you gotta yeah. mature. And you got to be able willing to die and you got to be willing to sacrifice. And this is what I was going to say. This is my other point, because um, we were in a in an environment on Monday um, and, and you said some things that really penetrated my heart. You know, in reference to your wife, to Pastor T, mom, and, um, you know, just talking about the sacrifices that you make as a husband and as a father, even as a pastor, like. You got to sacrifice like that's just it. There's no way around it. Mm -hmm. Like you have to sacrifice. And because you are the male child, the male, the man, um, a lot of more things are going to happen on, you know, 
on your end. And so yeah. I don't know. I just think that it's good that we have these conversations. I'm grateful for it as a daughter and as a young woman that is still single because it means something to be able to see those examples, but then know that you have mentors that you can talk about these things and you can get some resolutions and some wisdom. Yeah. And and I want to mention, as you said, marriage is for grown folks. We know we kind of put that in a in a simple statement, but what does that look like? Okay. And maturity has to be confronted. Otherwise, maturity can't manifest. Oh, my God. Today. So in maturity has to be confronted. And many times when you get in a relationship, you start discovering in maturity in one another. Uh, and then your mentors start talking about your immature behavior. You know, mm -hmm. you've got to think beyond. You've got to make sacrifices. You know, when you understand the mission, you really begin to understand the level of sacrifice. That's good. But when you don't understand the mission, you really don't know what the sacrifice is. You know, and in the scriptures, it was plainly told us for the husband to love their wife as Christ also loved the church. That's tall cotton right there. You know, and, and really? when, when you bring to a place of commitment and covenant, uh, you know, when they're when the relationships are right, there's also grace. There's grace. There's ability of God on you. And sometimes people say, I don't know how you deal with that, man. There's grace because we're supposed to be together. Therefore, there's grace. And many times relationships fail because the relationships weren't intended to be. Mm. And because we, 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 we come together and we talked about this on other broadcasts, lust instead of love. Yeah. We skip gradients. We didn't ever discover why we are to be together why are we supposed to merge our anointings you know come on wow. you see this is a whole nother level of covenant when you start talking about marriage that's one yeah. thing to be a friend okay? okay friends can do some things and they don't have to sacrifice as much as a married couple has to because yeah. they are not forming the covenant that that a friends are are forming but it's in the time of being friends, you begin to learning the level of sacrifice that you're going to have to make. You're also going to, gonna, I mean, listen, I learned how to pray. <laughs> listen, I learned how to die to self. I yeah. learned to deal with my selfishness. Oh, come on now. A lot of relationships fail, whether it be friends, uh, whatever it is, because of yep. selfishness. That's true. And you can't have great relationships being selfish because the only no. person that matters is you. It's true. Only person matters is you. Okay. Yeah. And when you're in that state of mind, you don't value the other person's what's important to another person. And you will sabotage and you will because you're not getting what you want. So so you you throw tantrums, you 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 sabotage a relationship. Uh, mm -hmm. You mistreat people. Um, you feel entitled. Okay. Mm -hmm. Listen, out of out of 34 years of marriage, when my wife cooked, I still told her thank you. Come she on. did not have to cook for me. She was not obligated to do that. When she did a load of laundry, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And if she did it and didn't fold them up, I had to fold them myself. Thank you for washing them. I didn't get offended because she didn't fold them. She That's didn't so wash them. Oh, come on now. That's good. And so, you know, that's the, that's the way we got to start taking things. And, and when you start valuing people, uh, you value someone speaking to you, you know, loving your neighbor. You know, your community becomes solid when, when, when we can communicate and show value. Holding the door for someone. You know, oh, holding the door for someone, being kind one to another. And mm. all those things bring about great relationships and unity and things that, that sometimes we overlook or we take for granted. You know, we take for granted. Yeah. And we don't need to take love for granted. We don't need to take kindness for granted. We need to learn to appreciate people. And when you appreciate people, it's ongoing. It, it goes further than the, than the event, okay? 
it'll make you do something the next time. It'll, it'll make you, you know, uh, uh, like I said, just go the extra mile when you appreciate someone, you know, and, and I think that that's something that we, we, we miss mm-hmm. and we don't talk about. Mm-hmm. You know, so mechanically we say thank you, but we really didn't appreciate it. Mm-mm. And we didn't value their level of sacrifice or, or whatever the situation and circumstance is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this thing of entitlement, you know, I believe when we get these things right, I believe that we can be the best of friends. A friend will do for a friend. He says, you know, what, 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 how does it, uh, man to lay down his life for his friends? I, yes, sir. Yeah, I believe when, when when relationships are valued like that, that friend will go that extra mile. But when it's when it's not um, covenant, when it's not going in both directions, then people start to back up from that. They do. They start to back up from that, and mm-hmm. and that's where. And when you called on the copper, because here's another thing. In order to have great relationships, there's going to have to be some confrontation. Yes. You know, there's going to have to be some, and confrontation doesn't mean that it's negative. Right. And mature people can talk. They can have conversations about difficult things. Doesn't have to end up in an argument. Doesn't have to end up with someone being offended. None of those mm-hmm. things. We just need to talk about this difference that we have. And diversity mm-hmm. embraces unity achieved. I need you to be different. I don't need you to be just like me. That's because good. There's some strength that you have that I need, and there's some strength that I have that you need. And we merge those anointing together. You know what happens? When relationships are formed, right relationships, even if it's just two great friends, okay, two great friends. The 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 world is, is has gotten has gained something. Mm-hmm. They're stronger. And you're talking about a husband and a wife. Oh my Ooh. God. They strengthen one another. They make each other better. That's mm-hmm. the indication of a right relationship, uh, a, a healthy relationship. Yes, they sir. make each other better. Okay. Yes, they make each other better. Increases their joy, increases. Love increases. Healing. Listen, healing happens. Yes. Healing happens. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it's a God thing. It really, really is. Yeah. They become powerful together. Uh, just mm-hmm. walk in the room. You ever seen two two older couples or an older couple? I'm talking about older couple. I'm a young man. I'm just 59 years old. I'm going to talk about it, Bishop. 40 some years. Amen. Yeah. But I, I see a, a, a couple, they, and they say they're proud of, we've been married 65 years. And they still holding hands. Yes. They're still opening doors for one another, helping yes. each other. Come on, I'm still trying to serve each other. Yes. And that thing's contagious. Yes. That thing is contagious. Still smiling, yep. laughing together. Listen, still like each other. Oh, talk about it now. <laughs> they still like each other. They still like each other. <laughs> That's good. She still got a twinkle in his eye, in her eye for him. He yep. still got a twinkle in his eye for her. Yeah. Man, come on. So yep. love increases. It gets larger and larger. That's and don't y'all think that's what the world needs to see? Absolutely. Yes. The that's next what the generation needs to see. see it. Little girls and little boys need to see that. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. I, I, I want to see it. I need to see it. <laughs> so you know what? Let's just set to go. This is gonna be us. This is gonna be this us. Yes, sir. Be us, Mariah. This is gonna be us. This is what we're gonna do. We're gonna talk. We're gonna learn. We're gonna grow. Come on now. Mm-hmm. We we gonna we gonna be all right when when we when we get called on the carpet about something and say, hey, you know, we we can do it better, y'all. We. I didn't say I or you. We, we can do this better, y'all. Can we say this, Tracy? Can we say we can do this better? We can do this better. We can do yes. life. We can do relationships better. We can have great friends. 
You know, mm-hmm. we're not going to be on social media talking about toxic this and toxic that and and I hate this and I hate that and all these things. I think no, it may be so, but we're gonna we're gonna be mature enough to 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 fix it. Let's be mm-hmm. mature enough, y'all. Let's have a call to action. Everybody you know, everybody that's a friend, your families, family members, and all that. Let's have a call to action. Let's yeah. love. Each other. Let's honor each other. Let's learn what we need to learn. And listen, and not be judgmental or critical of somebody that don't know or didn't learn it or nobody invested the time in them to teach them or to show them. And then be honest. You know what, y'all? We ain't never really seen successful relationships. Let's just be honest about it. But that doesn't mean that we can't have them and we don't deserve to have them. And let's stop the madness. That's good. Talk to our teenagers and say, hey, guys, let's stop the madness. You guys can can have great communities to live in. You guys can have fun. You can have great lives. Mm -hmm. Hating one another, doing all manner of evil towards one another. It's not going to be. It's not going to be. And so I believe we got to teach people how to love one another. We gotta demonstrate, we gotta talk about it. We gotta confront some things, okay? We gotta confront some things. Let's accept some responsibility. We can do that. Everybody says, Stephanie, this is gonna be us. Yeah, we can do, we can do better. We can do better. And if they say, well, what you talking about? Well, you know, we, we, don't, we don't treat each other right. You know, what you mean? Well, be candid, because, you know, in order to initiate change, there has to be some candidness. I didn't I didn't say out of anger or out of hurt, out of love. This is out of love. Yes, this is out of love. You know, this is out of love. And when our why is big enough, we can do enough. Mm-hmm. When we see the bigger picture. We got to see the big picture. OK, we got to see the big picture. And I, I don't know about you. I love having great people around me. Oh, yes, absolutely. I love I mean, great environments. And, and I'm not talking about environments where I'm talking about healthy environments. Let's just, yeah, like, yeah. Healthy environments. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Seth, you want to say something? I just, I remember, um, I just remember uh, you teaching or maybe having a conversation or saying, um, about how you had to learn how to correct with love. And mm-hmm. I think that it's really good because sometimes we won't say anything uh, or do anything because we think that that is how we're showing love to a person if we just don't say anything because we don't want to hurt their feelings or we don't want to, um, you know, make them feel inadequate or something like that. But in actuality, it's the opposite of that. If you do love them, you will say something um, and you will address it because you don't want to um, have the relationship go a different way or, or you don't want them to be you know, operating in something that's, that's not good or not healthy or whatever the case. And so you do have to say something. And so just learning how to correct in love. Yeah. With- and love will do that. You know, you, you, you'll, you'll learn how to do things when, when you value the relationship. Yeah. You know, you can tone it down. Um, oh yeah. You can tone it down. Because, because for me, God, I mean, God talks to me and deal with, deals with me different than I'm sure he does with, with any of his children. Uh, Cause I just know the way I communicate, but, <laughs> and so even when you're doing those things, when you pray and you really are, in a position to where you really want to love people, God will show you and teach you how to deal with people individually, collectively. If it's a specific need, God will help you and show you and teach you. And, and if you don't know, get with someone who can mm-hmm. help you. Say, listen, I know I need to do better. You know, mm-hmm. a husband can say, listen, I know my, I, I, I can't, I don't know how to talk to my wife. Um, I sent, I think I sent you guys this clip of these young men. They were sitting around talking and this young man mm-hmm. was sharing his testimony and said that 
he didn't know how to really communicate how to show his emotions. And so every time his wife would get emotional, he would make an exit. And he'd be like, listen, when you kind of get that together, we can come back and we can talk about this. Well, that wasn't what she needed. And finally, he realized he needed to get in there where she was. And in the way, and I, I know I'm not telling exactly the way he told it, but what it ended up was they both ended up sitting in the floor, sitting in the floor weeping. She, she know he felt her. And he realized, I finally felt what my wife was trying to tell me. I feel it now. Where I was in her eyes dismissing her emotions. Now we are experiencing how she's feeling together. And he says their relationship has not been the same. He hasn't been the same. And that's what I'm talking about. There's a grace for this place. There's a grace when relationships or ordained of God. And when we want to do things God's way, just to commit to love somebody, you'll find grace in that place. You'll be able to love someone that people be like, why you, why you, why are you dealing with them? Mm -hmm. Because there's a grace on you because you've committed to love them. Amen. Not based upon how they're performing, but based upon who they are. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? People oh, yeah. are not what they do. Talk I'm about it. I had to get in touch with who I really was. And many times people are being treated based upon what they're doing or what they've done. But love will cause you to see much further than that. And you can see the greatness in them. Everybody has greatness in them. Everybody has success in them. It's whether or not you get into the place of the right relationships that can cultivate it, that has the grace and the anointing on their life to heal you where you hurt, to teach you what you don't know, help you understand what you don't understand, and to empower you where you need to be empowered. And unfortunately, um, like I said, sometimes you dismiss people that was going to even make you aware of who you really are and what's your purpose and call to do. Help us, Lord. Come wow. On. That's why we need one another. We do. We need one another because it unlocks who we really are. Because okay. all of us have greatness in us. But it takes something and someone to pull that greatness out. Sometimes you can listen to a mother who has a child. Didn't know, didn't understand, scared to death about having a baby. But all of a sudden, this little life begins to live on the inside of them. And they start correcting and they start adjusting and, and they start caring and they start loving. And they was tough on the exterior and all the different types of things. Oh, come on now. Mm -hmm. the, hello? Yeah. And the right nurturing there with them. And then what was in them, they didn't know they could love like that. They didn't know they would sacrifice like that. They didn't know. Come on, how 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 they would make them feel, you know. They're touched. They're they're. Come on, you know. I do. Yeah. 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 I remember, you know, my daughter Ashley. I prayed for her, and when she would get upset, I was I was the only one that could calm her down, and she loved to lay on my chest. Man, that got me in touch with some things, man. It caused a man to stand up on the inside of me. And uh, it, it began to correct my wrong behaviors, my wrong ways of thinking, my wrong ways of feeling. And she drew that out of me. Does, does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. My wife drew that out of me. You know, now you don't need to have the wrong voices in your ear. Because when you got to sacrifice and you got to die to self and you got to uh, 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 stay committed, you got to be patient. You got to be long, suffer long and, and endure hardness. Come on now. Uh, my temperament, I, I don't deal with disrespect, but but when people don't know what they're doing is disrespectful. Come on now. That ain't disrespectful. That's the way they roll.
That's how they roll. Wow. How they roll. That's all they know. That's the way they do it. That's the way they talk. That's the way everybody around them handle. That's the way they talk to each other. That's the way they come. Are you understand what I'm saying? And it's to you, good. that's respectful. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, and, and 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 there's grace though to 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 love someone out of that and into who they really are. Wow. But that's where divine relationships come in. Relationships that are ordained of God. And I tell anybody, ask God, you know, why are we together? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Is yes, this sir. your will? And and don't miss no words. Mm -hmm. I tell anybody that's a friend or whatever they are in my life, ask God about me. You don't have to take my word for it. You can ask God about me. Okay. You can pray. Ask God about ask God who I am. You don't have to yeah. take my words, but you can watch my life though. Yes. Watch my life. But sometimes people are so tentative, they're so untrustworthy. But I do know for me to hear God's voice confirm someone to me. Yes. That 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 solidifies some things. And now I, I have a level of commitment. I have a level of, of, of grace and uh, I'm honored at that place. I'm honored and I'm, I'm, I'm uh, humbled that God would trust me with a precious life of his to love Ooh. them, to, to bring healing to them, whatever it is that they need of, to be patient. With them. See, we, we got to see ourselves as a different light, man. It's an honor to be a mother. It's an honor to be a father. It ought to humble you. You know, it's an honor to be called a friend. It's an honor to be called a husband. Mm, mm, mm. It's an honor to be called pastor. Because God has trusted you. So it ought to bring you to a place of humility, a place of, 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 of humbleness, a place of, of, uh, uh, he, he's honored you. Yeah. You know, so I tell anybody, you can ask God who I am. Yeah. What he says about me, believe that. You know, believe that. You know, and I'm reminded of, 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 and I'm not likening myself to this, but I'm just saying, mm -hmm. the Father, God ought to be saying, this is my son of whom I'm well pleased, or this is my daughter of whom I'm well pleased. A lot of times we're like, I don't know, I don't know about people. Well, ask God about him. He knows. Come on. That's good. Thank you, God. He knows about him. Yes, he does. He'll tell you the truth because he loves you. He, he loves you. But if you don't get that factor down in your life where you know that God loves you to the place of where you can trust him. If you don't know God love you, loves you, you can't trust him. If you don't trust him, then it's hard for you to get to the relationships that God ordained before the beginning of time, whether it be, be businesses, whether it be ministries, whether it be uh, friends, whether it be mates, husbands, wives, none of mm -hmm. that. Come on. It's hard mm -hmm. to be successful when you don't put God in the equation and trust him because I may say something or do something, but you will know that's not who I am. That's just something that I did. Mm, thank you, Lord. Pent to you, and you can call me on the carpet, and you don't have to worry about World War III striking up. Because honestly, it was in my it was in my head. It was not in my heart. That's powerful, Bishop. I wasn't. Oh, thinking. I wasn't thinking. I was. I had too much on my mind. Whatever it is, and I stepped wrong. I said something wrong. I did something wrong. Now to continue in that behavior is an indication that I need to renew my mind. There's some wisdom that I lack. Mm -hmm. There's some wisdom that I lack, and I can remember uh, my wife telling me, "I'm calling Bishop because <laughs> <laughs> he need to have a talk with you." <laughs> oh. He need to have a talk with you. <laughs> you know, that's you why know. you might have people yeah. in your life that will tell you the truth in love and, yeah. will, and will confront your immaturity. Listen oh, to yeah. this, even your ignorance, your stubbornness. 
your carnality. Yeah. Whatever. You need people in your life like that. And those, that's where you can know that you are loved, okay? So you know yeah, that you're loved by the quality of people that God allows to be in your life. Ooh. And listen, love yourself enough to be the best version of you that you can be so you can mm -hmm. attract and add, add value everywhere that you go and yeah. whatever relationship that you're in. Mm -hmm. And we can do good. We got this. We can do this. We're going to do it, right, y'all? We're going to do it. Effie, Kimberly, dude, we're going to do this thing. We're going to do it. We're going to make a difference. We're going to yeah. make a difference. That's our time today. Definitely. We it, was good. <laughs> it was good. Hey, man. It was good. Amen. Listen, we love you guys. Thank you. Share this. Uh, we did. We had a technical difficulty. We lost 15 minutes today. We had some great conversation in the beginning, but uh, we'll get a chance to do it again. I know uh, because my heart is to know what's in your heart. Please comment, uh, uh, inbox us, whatever you need. Email us. Um, you can do those things because uh, you may have something on your heart you want to talk about. We'll talk about it. If we don't know the answer, we'll get with somebody. We'll, we'll collectively discover the answer because we can do this and we can do it well. Amen. We can do this. We got this, y'all. We got yeah. it. We got it. We got it. We're going to do it. All We're right. Do That's it. We're going to do this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let's do this. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. We're going to have healthy relationships. Yes, sir. We stop all the negative at negativity about relationships. No, we can have good friends. We can have great friends. No, we can have great marriages. Okay? Yeah. yeah. That yeah. pleases the Father, and I believe it will be pleasing to you. I don't know about y'all, but I love love. Come I love on, baby. friends. Yeah. Come on. I do. I do. Yeah. I love love, and I, I love great friends. And like, like I said, I need them. <laughs> we I need them. Let's just yes, be we real. Do. We need one another. Yes, we do. Okay. Thank you. And if somebody tell you or you've told yourself you made these inner vows to yourself, I don't need nobody. You need to renounce that. Tell Lord, I repent. I do need. I need all the friends because wealth is a byproduct of who you become, not what you have or not what you do. Yes. And the sooner you discover that, you open up yourself for the blessing because the shortest route to your destiny is a divine connection, a relationship. Come on. That's the <laughs> shortest route to your destination. That can become the shortest route to your peace, the shortest route to your joy, the shortest mm -hmm. route to you getting a revelation of the magnitude of God's love for you. Mm -hmm. Be in a relationship. Mm. Wow. Come on. You being healed could be in a divine relationship. Mm. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's how God does things. Yes. That's how God does things. He made it so that God is a relational God. So yes, he, he made us to need relationships. That's why he said to love him and to love one another. Love your neighbors, you love yourself, but we first need to love him with all of our heart, all of our mind, and all of our soul. Okay? Amen. Yeah, hallelujah. Well, we can go over a little bit because we the recording is good, but <laughs> time, so we still actually got some time. We got some time. <laughs> so, Deputy, if you if you were to 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 say or evaluate amongst you all, you're out there. You're a single, beautiful young lady. Man, what's the conversation out here? What 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 is it? What's the conversation? What's people's perspectives on on relationships? You know, honestly, Bishop. Um... We, we're living in a time where people don't take anything at, at face value. Um, there's so many voices and so many options or opportunities in 
in our society um, to help people to be less authentic. Oh. And, I'm, and I'm trying to, to be very graceful in season in what I'm saying. Um, but people are definitely not trustworthy. Um, and I I, I want to bring this topic up because it's something that we're dealing with and it's, um, you know, the transgender um, movement that's going on. Okay. Um, and so dating on, on a whole is, is pretty skeptical um, in certain areas because, you know, people are just you know, just kind of all over the place. So anyway, you, you asked me that question. And so, and, and, and of course, this in different environments, but um, people are, you know, just not really want, de- having a desire to have a, a mate, a husband or a wife, but yet um, maybe thinking that it is not possible or, uh, you know, it can't be done. Um, and so, then on the other hand, you have people that are, you know, really excited and, you know, still getting married and, and still dating and having, you know, good relationships and healthy relationships. Um, there's just a mixture of things that are going on. And so uh, for me, it's about making sure that you focus on, you know, who you are personally, um, you know, what your relationship with Christ, you know, if you have the right identity, uh, you know, if you you know, know who you are, you know yourself and you love yourself and you're able to do that and, and have, you know, a healthy environment within your own self. I think sometimes people also are looking for others to complete them rather than being able to maybe um, add to or, uh, you know, grow together. But they're looking for someone or something to complete them versus them already doing the work and being completed and, and then presenting that to, you know, yeah, to the two world. Or, but, don't make a whole. Two half don't make a whole. That's good. That's a great way to put that. Thank you. <laughs> and so, um, you know, just those are some of the things as you talk about, like what's going on in the society or in the atmospheres that, that we're dealing with when it comes to like dating and the value of relationships and whether or not people are actually, um, honest and trustworthy. Well, those are all character issues and, and we have to um, address this and whether we realize it or not, um, God is the creator of all things. Amen. And people need to um, um, submit to God uh, in order to have what God intended. Mm-hmm. And I believe that we have and we need more people that can be honest about, as I said, and I'll tell the whole world, I didn't know how to be a husband, a father, or a friend until I came to know Christ, until I learned God's way of living and doing, and he corrected my character flaws and my issues. Mm -hmm. And though the world may have accepted them, it wasn't acceptable in a marriage. It wasn't acceptable as a father. It wasn't acceptable as a friend. You know, some things are tolerable, people tolerate it, but the state mm-hmm. of society is in a deficit because of the lack of character. You know, you Absolutely. say people are untrustworthy. It ain't good to not be trustworthy and call yourself a, a spouse to someone, uh, a friend to someone. Listen at this. Even employers run background checks on you to see if you who you say you are. Yes, they do. Come on. And and, yeah. and and they want to know, are you trustworthy? Uh, they want to know, you know, that they they that's what credit is about now. They want to know if you are trustworthy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, credit is messing a whole lot of people's lives up because mm-hmm. they hadn't had character in the handling of finances or what they covenanted or told someone they were going to do. And then they end up not doing it. And so mm-hmm. now it's affecting them getting jobs, it's affecting them getting buying automobiles and cars. I mean, and we always try to find ways around it, but it does not uh, deflect from your lack of character. That's good. Yes, sir. And, and at some place, 
And when you're walking with God, those things get, they get confronted. They get yes, confronted. They and you need to be around people that love you enough that will will not placate that with you and 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 will confront those things in you mm -hmm. enough to tell you the truth so that you can become the best person that God created you to be. So we got mm -hmm. a lot of work to do. Oh, yeah. um, we got a lot of work to do, Stephanie, and we got to have conversations about things mm -hmm. and we all got to get back to God. We all got to get back to God. And some are going to say, well, I don't need none of that. Well, that's okay. But it's when there's enough people telling why they have true success, why they do have joy and peace, the solution mm -hmm. is, is that I turn my heart to God and he gave me the ability to become the person I needed to be. That's when my life turned around. That's when my life changed. That's when I began experiencing the love, the joy, the peace, and the prosperity that I need in my life. Amen. Yeah. And so I believe we can do it. We're going to do it. And we're going to be light and salt. And we're going to be leaders. Amen. People of influence. That's the other thing that happens when you're in right relationships. Your influence increases. Come on. Yeah, that's good. It does. Your credibility increases. Mm. Mm -hmm. Everything about you increases when you can have uh, uh, right relationships. Good. It does. A person that don't have good relationships, you need to stay away from them and pray for them uh, because <laughs> that's a red flag. That's a red Talk flag. About it, Bishop. Yeah, glory. That's a red flag. Okay, I love to see. Um, yeah, of course, I used to serve and work in the restaurant industry, and so I used to love to see. Um, we used to call them the bridge ladies because they would always play, you know, bridge and play the card card games and stuff. Yeah, and they would come out to to eat lunch, and of course, they all got water and you know, hot tea and coffee and maybe quiche and a salad, but they would fight over the check. And they say, you know, we've been friends for thirty four years, and they say, mm. well, you got last time and well you got it last time and I'd be looking at the check it it'll you know it'd be twenty thirty dollars but still yeah. the fact that they were still friends yeah. that they were active and that they were still you know willing to um fellowship and be there for each other and talk or whatever the case may be and I mean we fight over the check. Yeah. Um I used to say to myself man I want to be like that when I get older. You know <laughs> you, you look at uh, TV shows like the Golden Girls or just, you know, things like that. And so you say, man, you know, to be able to have a relationship for longer than five to 10 years in today's society, you're doing good. Yeah, Cause this is good. <laughs> this is good. People it's, be like, it's, yeah, our, I'm it's done. our time now, Steph. We really do have to go. <laughs> <laughs> but Pastor Sam, Samantha Webster said something. We're in a time where the world wants to bully you to accept and compromise broken and unhealthy relationships and call it love with the approval of God. Wow. That's so true. That's so true. But there is a way and there's a right way. And let's yeah. keep talking about it. Let's keep loving on one another and we can get this done. Okay. So to healthy relationships, that's what we're going to have. That's what we are. That's who we be. Amen. In Jesus name. So until next week, guys, share, 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 comment, inbox us, let us know. And we're going to keep talking about this relationship piece because it's the key to our success. Amen. God bless you. Till next time.